one, three products and quotients. When we are doing this, we want to remember our rules for multiplication. So the, the product or the multiplication of two positive numbers is going to give us a positive. If it's two negative numbers, it's going to give us a positive for our answer. If the product of a positive number and a negative number is what we're taking, our answer is going to be a negative. Um, remember the absolute value of the product of two or more numbers is the product of their absolute values. Um, another thing that you, you can remember is that if you have an odd number of negatives, then your answer is going to be negative. If you have an even number of negatives, your answer is going to be positive. So if we look at example one, we have negative three times negative two times negative one times four times negative five. So looking here, we have one, two, three, four negatives, so our answer is going to be positive. So this is going to become a positive, a positive, positive, positive. So the three times two gives us six, times one is just six, and then times four times five. If we do the four times five, that's 20. That's going to make it a lot easier for us to multiply. Six times 20 gives us 120. If we look at B, we're given negative 4 times 3 times negative 2 times negative 1 third. If we look at this, there's an odd number of negatives, so our answer is going to be negative. So these two can turn into positives, which means that we can do either the 4 times 2 and then the 3 times the negative 1 third or the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 third. It's up to you. Um, if it was me, I would be doing the 4 times 2, which is 8. So I'm going to multiply the 4 times 2, which is 8, and then multiply that by 3 times one, negative 1 third. So that 3 times the negative 1 third is going to turn into negative 1. And 8 times negative 1 is just 8. If we look at C, we have 24 times negative 15 times 0 times 13. So 0 times anything is going to be 0. So we don't have to worry about a negative or a positive for our answer because 0 is neither negative nor positive. So because we have that 0, our answer is just zero. Okay, you want to remember that a product of a non-zero number is positive if the number of negative factors is even, and the product of a negative if the number is of negative factors is odd. So the same thing that we just did. If you have an even number of negatives, your answer is um, positive. Or is, yeah, positive. And if you have an odd number of negatives, your answer is negative. Okay. If we look at example two, we now have variables with our expression. So we have 2a, which is 2 times negative 3x times negative 5x. We know a negative times a negative. We have an even number of negatives, so we're going to make those positives. And then we also have that 2 times 3x, which we can do, and that's going to give us 6x. And then we can multiply it by the 5y, because remember that turned into a positive. 6 times 5 is 30. Keep the x and the y. So 30xy. Like that. Alright, so for b, oops, we have negative p times 2q plus 3p times negative 2q. So we're going to do this side here first, as well as this side here first, before we can combine with addition. So the negative p times 2q is going to give us a negative 2 pq and then that 3p minus 2q or sorry 3p times negative 2q is going to give us a negative 6pq so we look do we have this do we have like terms yes both of them have pq attached to them so add the negative 2 and the negative 6 remember last week when we went over this the two negatives when you're adding them keep the sign and add the numbers so it's going to give us a negative 8 and keep the pq attached to it so negative 8 PQ is our answer. If we look at example 3, we're now distributing here. So for A, we have negative 2 times 3T minus 1 half. That negative 2 we're going to distribute in. So we're going to do negative 2 times 3T as well as negative 2 times negative 1 half. Remember, the sign in front of the number stays with the number. So the negative 2 times 3t is going to give us a negative 6t. And a negative 2 times negative 1 half is going to give us a positive 1. So remember, that just doesn't go away. There's not a variable that's attached to it. So you have to represent that plus 1. So negative 6t plus 1 
is your solution here. If we look at B, we have negative, we have 16D minus 5 times 3D minus 4. So again, we're going to distribute that negative 5. When we do that, we're going to have 16D minus 5 times 3D minus 5 times negative 4. Again, the number in front of the sign stays with the sign. So that 16D, we're not doing anything with. We're just going to drop it down. The negative 5 times 3D is negative 15D. And negative 5 times negative 4 is a positive 20. So now combine your like terms. 16D minus 15D is just 1D, or D, plus 20. So with opposites, if it's asking us to give the opposite of each expression, we're switching the sign in front of each number. So we're taking a negative 1 and we're multiplying it by the expression that they give us. So if that's the case, that negative 1 is going to become positive 1, that 3y is going to become negative, and that 5 is going to become negative. So our solution here would be negative 3y minus 5 as the opposite of 3y plus 5. So same thing with B. We're taking the opposite of negative 6x plus 4, so we're going to take negative 1 and distribute it into the expression negative 6x plus 4. So that negative 1 is going to turn into a positive 1, the 6 is going to become positive, and the 4 will become negative, making this 6x minus 4. For C, they give us negative xy minus 5z, so again, you're distributing that negative 1 in. Oops. When we do this, again, the 1 becomes negative, the xy becomes, I'm sorry, the 1 becomes positive, the xy becomes positive, and the, the 5z becomes positive. So we're going to have xy plus 5z. Oops, we also have d. All right, so here we're going to distribute that negative 1 into the entire expression 4y cubed minus 8 y squared plus 3y minus 7. So again, the negative 1 turns to positive, the, the 4y cubed becomes negative 4y cubed, the negative 8y squared becomes positive 8y squared, and the 3y becomes a negative 3y, making the 7 a positive as well. So this is going to give us negative 4y cubed plus 8y squared minus 3y plus 7. So again, we're just switching the, the signs in front of each of these terms. If we move on to example 5, we're now do, dealing with division. Remember, division is the same exact thing as multiplication with your signs. So two negatives is going give to give us a positive. Two positives gives us a, a positive. Opposite signs give us a negative. So if we look at example 5a, we have 12 divided by 4, which we know off the top of our head is a positive 3. For B, remember division and fractions are the same thing. So B, we have negative 18 over negative 3, which is the same thing as negative 18 divided by negative 3. These turn into positives, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. For C, we have 15 divided by negative 3 over 2. Remember, division, keep, change, flip. So this 15 can also become 15 over 1. We're going to deal with now multiplication, and we're going to flip that second fraction to be negative 2 over 3. We can now cross-simplify. The 3 and the 5 share a common factor of 3. The 3 goes into 3 one time, and, five, and 3 goes into 15 five times. So now this is 5 times negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. For division within your fractions, remember, you have to use your order of operations with this. So when you're looking at this example for number 6, we have negative 9 divided by negative 3 all over negative 1 squared minus, or sorry, times negative 3. So do the negative 9 times, the, or divided by the negative 3 first. A negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. 3 goes into 9 3 times. So it's going to be 3 over negative 1 squared times negative 3. The negative 1 squared is going to give us positive 1, so it's going to be 3 times 1 times negative 3, which is still 3 over negative 3. 
which just gives us a negative 1. For example, 7. This is going over the fact that you have an um, expression in your numerator and one single term in your denominator. When that happens, you can separate these two and make two fractions, so that way it makes it a little bit easier for you to divide these numbers. So if we look at example 7, they give us 48, 48 minus 12x squared all over negative 3. Now this is the same exact thing as saying 48 over negative 3 plus negative 12x squared over negative 3. So when we're doing this, the 48 divided by negative 3, we have a positive divided by a negative. Our answer is going to be negative. 3 goes into 4 one time with 1 left over, and 3 goes into 18 six times, so that's negative 16. We can keep the addition sign and put parentheses around the next term if we need to. However, the negative 12x squared divided by a negative 3 is going to turn into a positive, so we don't need the parentheses that's there. Okay, so we're going to keep going. 12x squared divided by 3. 3 goes into 12 four times, and you're going to keep the x squared because that 3 does not have another x attached to it. So you can rewrite this if it makes you comfortable to put it into standard form as well to give you 4x squared minus 16. Either one is acceptable. But like I said, if it asks you to put it into standard form, you're going to have to give the 4x squared minus 16.